Thank you for clicking play. This is the PK Comic Book 411. I was supposed to give you all of the other publishers right now, but I got to clean up Marvel. It is literally the last issues of these titles. So we got to bag, seal them, and then put them away until the next year that we bring them out and go through the nostalgia of it. So this time I'm going to go through uh, the individual titles of the, the solo characters. Then I'm going to go into the teams. Then I'm going to go into the events. And I'm going to end up with uh, Secret Wars and a couple of titles that spin off of Secret Wars. First, we're going to start off with Ant-Man number five. It is the last issue. It's the end of an arc, and you end up really caring about his family life. Um, the derelict trying to do right. It's, it's really a touching theme. And we know that the uh, movie's coming out, and I hope it's good. Paul Rudd, not too sure if I like that choice. But if it's not good, I have the trade. Nick Spencer, it's one through five, and the trade <coughs> is what I'll be giving my friends. If it's a horrible movie, I'm like, this is the real Ant-Man. Moving on to Captain Marvel, number 15. It is the last issue. She's finally back to Earth. Um, Kelly Sue DeConnick. Um, that is the wife of Matt Fraction. Um, sort of an interesting exploration of friends and stuff. But uh, it's the end of this one. Um, that particular one was in memorum, memorum, mem memor memorium of uh, her aunt. So that was a really touching last issue. Um, even if you haven't read Captain Marvel um, and you like that touching family theme of, of death in the family, uh, Captain Marvel number 15. Moving on, we have Nova 30 and 31. It's still fun. It still delivers. Got a quick hug with his dad at the very end. You know, it's, it's nice. Um, the Warbringer sent over 100 asteroids and he's trying to save them from the Earth. And then the very last issue is number 31. It's nice to have an end instead of a to be continued. Um, you know, for those like me that read every issue, perhaps it was a little bit rushed. But in the end, um, Jerry Duggan, he's off to the Infinity Gauntlet in 1897 and something. and uh, Deadpool, Mrs. Deadpool, actually. Um, Superior Iron Man 9 is the last issue. And this is out of order. I have eight here. Yep, yep. Female Thor is the next issue. Now we have a female Iron Man the next issue. I, I don't know. But uh, it, it's still the backup AI of Tony fighting the current Tony. But the last issue is this. And he finally beats the AI self and tricks Pepper. Sort of the end. And if it is the end, it's, it's a very dark and lonely end. Um, so I don't really know if it's going to be superior or they're going to re redo it. And I think I saw in previews it was Invincible Iron Man again. By the way, F.E. Gotta love it. Atomic chart of elements. And of course we have Thor, the last issue, number eight. Where it is revealed. Um, the most important thing I found in this one is that he was saying mother to the all-mother, but that's not really his mother. Um, granted, they are rewriting the mythos a little bit, but his mother is Gaia, like Earth. Um, and just so you know, Wotan, when, Wotan is sort of Odin, Odin, Wotan, and that's Wednesday. And just so you know, people, Thursday is Thursday. Look it up. Going into the teams now, we have Amazing X-Men 19. This sort of became the superfluous title. Uh, Christopher Yost, I used to love him through Avenging Spider-Man, uh, which then turned into... Um, Spider-Man team-up. Um, it may have been Superior Spider-Man team-up. But, uh, yeah, it's the end of the, the Juggernaut arc. Sort of a filler title. I had a crush on Firestar as a kid, and it really didn't come through in that Amazing X-Men title. Um, I would not even get the trades. I wouldn't advise you to get the trades. Legendary Star-Lord. Notice the second printing. Uh-oh, PK. Uh, this is when Angel, Gamora, and Beast uh, are powered up, and they leave with the Black Vortex. And I didn't have Legendary Star Lord on a pull list, so I had to really find that just to be the completest that I am. Black Vortex, this is, I think, the final. Yes, it is. This is the final Black Vortex. And the one thing I can say about uh, the Black Vortex is that, uh, you know, Kitty saves a day, gets married, and her full name is Catherine Sprite. You know, it's this long name. Um, and then Quill from Peter Quill, because they get married. Um, 
the thing I like about the Black Vortex is that it still has long-lasting effects. And uh, the writer, which is Humphreys in this particular one, um, I guess they were, foresaw the fact of the reboot, um, so they could make long-lasting changes. Angel, Beast, Gamora being, being uh, some of them. Um, so the, this is then going to all uh, all new X Men 40 and Guardians of the Galaxy 26 and Legendary Star Lord, which is an omnipolis. But then they sort of tie it up. So going to Guardians Galaxy 26, uh, nothing about the cover. Very very fun. This is Peter Quill for president. It's really cool and he brings all of his Guardians as cabinet members. Really like that. Why Hannibal Smith, Hannibal Lecter, Raccoon? I I, I don't get it. Um, but we go to the end question mark and of course it goes into uh, the secret wars but Gamora is powered up by the black vortex takes on an entire planet fights the Chitari and that ends Guardians of the Galaxy and it just so happens that on both have I gotten to Nova yes I really like the fact that way back when I decided I liked these so much this is actually Jeff Loeb started Nova and I got the hard uh, cover there and then obviously Brian Michael Bendis started uh, Guardians of the Galaxy okay so uh, all new X-Men 41 this is the last issue they grab the mutants off of the San Francisco Utopia Island and uh, bring them to the new home at the uh, old weapon X factory and they just sort of leave it there um, and it says at the end that this is continued in Uncanny X-Men number 600 whereas this is also continued in Uncanny X-Men number 600 and I guess Brian Michael Bendis is going to you know cinch up both of these titles um, but this is the one that Dazzler is looking all punk and she gets her revenge on Raven um, I, who I think is jailed right now I'm not I'm not too sure um, but very Bendis very epic paced here and now we're going to the team of the Inhumans. 14 is the last of the uh, Inhuman title. Several storylines in here. You have line, Lineage and the Memories, Karnak escaping his life from, from hell, um, Gorgon's paralyzed. But then, of course, you know me, 14.5. It's the annual, and this sort of finishes it. Um, lots of concurring storylines on this. Maybe a bit too much. I mean, the baby's being born in Human Codex. Karnak escaping death from uh, from hell, um, but that cinches up in humans. Now, <clears throat> these were hard to find because it wasn't exactly on my pull list. But this is a three-part, five dollar each. Okay, five dollar each. It's it's you know what? Come to think of it, it is worth that. Apparently, Loveness writes for Jimmy Kimmel, so the humor in here is just wow. Spider-Man, if Loveness should write Spider-Man. How about that? I'll just say that. Um, Luca Pizzari is new, um, and then it changes to Lee and then Morgan in terms of the art as they go through each title. But um, it's a wonderful banter between Spider-Man, the Inhumans, and the New Humans. Um, there's a reference to Miss um, Marvel in this, as well as a reference to Inhuman number 10. In Axis, when Medusa says, oh yeah, when you fought me, Spider-Man, I wasn't really myself. Now, to be honest with you, they have never, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, they never showed or told how Medusa, uh, the Inhuman Queen, became not like Axis switched. Because she became a, a baddie for a while, and uh, they never really... She just sort of petered out, decided not to be bad. If, if that's somewhere that I don't know about, please comment. Please comment. Comment anyway. Subscribe anyway. I should be self-promoting, but I don't. I do this for me. I do this for you. Uh, for those that watch, right? Okay, so then we have Inhuman Special number two of three, and that is the Inhuman Special. Um, and this explains why Raven the Batty is all mad because they were another sect of uh, Inhumans that ha that weren't exposed to raw Terrigen. So the Terrigen bomb that Black Bolt did really screwed him up and deformed him all, and he lost his love, and he's all pissed, and he's gonna go smack out New New Adelan. So uh, yeah, he comes in, and he's sort of one of those good guys that turned bad because he lost his love. Again, witty, hilarious. Banting. I mean, Loveness sort of writes his, his dialogue is seamless. It's, it's just funny. Um, but Spider-Man leads the knee humans and uh, he ends up falling off. 
for like a second time, right? And so then Cap the new Captain America who's flying picks him up. And dude, I have to tell you one of the funniest quips that Spider-Man does. Okay. So that's in three of three. It's the finale. Okay. So, um, <laughs> loveness, excellent comedy. Spider-Man is basically being held uh, by his ankle, by the Captain America, um, Falcon America. And he goes, hey, yeah, so you're like, you, um, you uh, talk to birds, right? It's like, pause. No, I mean, like, your, your special ability. I mean, you can talk to, to birds. It's, it's a power you have. He goes, yes. He goes, so if, if all the bald eagles uh, were communists, would you, uh, would, you, <laughs> would you let everybody know or would you keep it a secret? It's just like, shut up. He goes, no, but seriously. And then there's like, I couldn't let you go now. Like, okay, shutting up. And then throughout the entire issue, there's always a part where Spider-Man is basically saying, okay, shutting up now. Again, love this. Five dollars. I don't know if it's going to be a trade, but I'll tell you what. If you want comedy and a good Spider-Man quip, boom. That's it. The inhuman error. Uh, three part. Going into uh, more of the teams, we have Avengers, Hickman's Avengers. It's so sad to see it go. Number 44. Wow. And then, Oh, by the way, this is after number 33. I should be... Sh this is... Okay, so read this and then that. So the new Avengers 33, last issue, Molecule Man becomes the key of the series. It's a little bit forced, but um, Doom's being Doom, you know, calling himself a god, saving the world. That's nice, right? You know, even if you are sort of out there and you save the world, that's nice. Thumbs up to uh, Victor Von Doom. So then we go into uh, Avengers 44. There's a, a rogue planet that was some part of Hickman's arc that sort of came in. You're saying, like, what the hell is that all about? Well, it actually comes to play in this one. Um, Tony Stark and Steve Rogers are having breakfast. Uh, they're still at odds. And uh, this is actually one of the ones that Captain America dreams and wakes up from the dream. No, no in literature. I've said that over and over again on, on these vlogs. actually happened in that. So those are the last issues of New Avengers and Avengers by Hickman. Now to the uh, problematic Avengers world that should have been Hickman's peoples when it all sort of stopped after Infinity, this sort of was born, and it doesn't make sense. It's all filler. There's, these characters are off in no man's land, and somehow they're in savage land in here. Um, so the only thing I can say about this is, please, when it comes to Kung Fu, this is the last issue, by the way, when it comes to Kung Fu, it's not a dojo. Shang Chi, Kung Fu. Wu Quan is the Kung Fu studio. I just do your homework, would you? I mean, say Wu Quan and have us look it up, right? Okay, moving on. Um, I do need to, and I wrote this down. Earth number two eight seven four four nine two three zero four eight nine three two. 287-449-2304-8932. That's uh, in this one. I mean, I wonder if that'll ever come up again. Pretty hilarious. But Namor shocks the hell out of Thanos in here. Really cool part here. Now, this is important, at least for me. These are the titles, and I have three, I think, yes, three, that are not ending right now. It actually goes through August. Even while Secret Wars is doing all of that it's doing, these, Magneto, Four timelines in this one. Current Magneto, such a badass. You can tell by the different uh, helmet right here. They sort of change that up. Um, wow. And the meetings with Namor, absolutely cool. This is really, really good. Polaris, the daughter, is involved in this. I, the, the lightning around him, very, very cool. Um, so, this is, yeah, Last Days of Magneto. And then it goes to Last Days of Magneto number 19. And Bun, you can tell that Cullen Bun, who's writing Aquaman right now and ruining it, had Empty Man, worked on World's End, uh, Earth 2, World's End. He's all over the place. But he's, this is the one that, I mean, hell, during Axis, he actually had more to say in this title than the actual R Rick Remender uh, Axis title itself. Um, but this is more about the mutant growth hormone and Magneto's daughter, per uh, Paralysis. Polaris. <sighs> Moon Knight. Bad dog owner story. Come on, Colin Bunn. Another one. 
Number 15, if I didn't already like Moon Knight and he was my favorite, my, Brian Michael Bendis, I would, I would not like this. I doubt I would like it. I think Warren Ellis set a tone that these guys can't, can't uh, follow. Um, by the way, Trees is getting really good. Again, a different, different vlog. Um, so the number 17th is going to be out on the 15th. And the plus side of, of Cullen Bunn doing this, at least there are one story arcs per issue. And I really find that refreshing. You really can't find that these days. There's crossovers and four-part arcs, which are great for trades. But to have a one-issue story arc, thumbs up. It's just that I don't particularly like him. Jeff Lemire, also being sort of a journeyman, going to wherever he can get a title, started the all-new Hawkeye, and I have to admit, it is good. It's very nice work. Thumbs up. This is three of five, I believe, that there's going to be five coming out in August. I don't know which date it is. Um, and uh, they're going to re-relaunch Hawkeye, and Jeff Lemire is, is going to do that. Um, the very cool thing about this... Um, they have like a different artist doing the flashbacks on the bottom third of the page. Very effective, very cool. As apart from those Kit Kat ads, it looks like David Duchovny. Have you seen that? Like the lower half, there's a lower half here and a half here, and one's like peanut butter Kit Kat, and the other one's, like, dude. It's like, it, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's uh, it seems a, it's a scary ad for a candy bar. All right, FCBD, Secret Wars number zero. I didn't have this. It gets to a point, if you've been reading Secret Wars, that there's certain arcs that sort of last over time and space and the whole collapse of everything. Now we know that Thanos and the Cabal went over to 1610 and the maker, who is Reed Richards, has the arc. That makes sense, okay? But then all of a sudden, we have the other ones from Earth 616 show up. It's like, how in the hell did they get an arc? Well, apparently it's in here. Valeria of the Richards family makes an arc. Weird thing is, is that in Secret Wars, she's not coming out of that, but the original Thor, Captain Marvel, etc., etc., come out of that arc. So you have a good arc and a bad arc, if you will. Though the bad arc also has Miles Morales and one other ultimate. I'll remember in a second. Anyway, so there's two stories in here. Um, the other one is a very weird, like, Japanese Titan thing coming in. Um, but, yeah. Life Rack. So, these are solid books. Assad Ribic from um, God Butcher. Very good. There's a cameo from Punisher, and Havoc is, like, having tea. and um, Oh, it's not in this one. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, I haven't read the Universe comics, but sometimes it's hard to know which Earth they're sort of coming from. Secret Wars number two. Doctor Strange sounded like Judge Dredd. Thor is like the police force that comes out in the in the Thor's um, aim is advanced idea mythology instead of mechanics. So they're all doing the sort of pseudo things. It's 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 a nice thing that, that they're doing. Um, then we have Secret Wars three. It's eight years. We finally have a timeline on here. There's eight years, and uh, this is uh, three years. Strange found the good arc, and so they are sort of kicking away. You know, basically locked up for three years. They didn't like during that. Um, but, you know, Victor's a good god, Doctor Strange says. And Doctor Strange also reminds me of, uh, is it Littlefinger from Game of Thrones? Oh, God, I hope that's right. The little pin. Looks like him. Talks like him, if you could hear him. Uh, oh, man, this is by far, this is something like, okay, Hickman, you got it. Gods against gods. Doctor Strange doing big things. Thanos doing big things. This is a wonderful, wonderful issue. This actually makes all of the reading worthwhile. Of all those years back from infinity, where's infinity? Back in infinity, it makes it all worthwhile. That number four of eight of Secret Wars. Now to the tie-ins, this was really, really fun for me. Luca Pizzari, obviously, that I said he was a newcomer. Um, this is, is, oh, geez. I mean, Kate of Bishop, because of Hawkeye, Kate Bishop. It's basically if you took them and put them into D&D, &D, right? Moon Knight actually looks like Moon Knight, and Moon Knight was a werewolf, which is actually his first appearance. I want to say 121. I don't know if that's correct, but in Werewolf by Night. And that's the most expensive comic book that I have, is the Werewolf by Night first appearance of Moon Knight. Here's the Thors, and again, um, 
God, I forget what the other people are saying on the forums. Uh, again, I go to Comic Book Nerds Are Hot, uh, your comic book community, and DC and Marvel Unite are my three forum groups that I'm active on. And uh, this is what I would call CSI Valhalla. But God, oh, Law and Thorder was the one. Law and Thorder. Weird World, Jason Aaron, it reminds me of Rick Remender's um, Dimension Z, like, oh, no, no, Rick Remender's Low on Image. That's what this uh, artwork reminds me of. And I won't have the spoiler of who rules Weird World, but she's a very lovely, awesome, sexy, evil lady. The Infinity Gauntlet, actually not too much happens in this one. There's a female, black female badass Nova in it. But uh, not too much happens here, sort of Thanos cameo, cameo. Uh, but it's just a setup. There's nothing wrong with a good setup. Now we have Battle World in Humans Adelan Ar Adelan Arising. Um, I'm pretty sure when they say G-Man, it means Ghost Rider. Um, but uh, there, this is the one that I was mentioning earlier. There is a, a never-been-seen version of Black Bolt. So if you're a Black Bolt fan, make sure you pick that up. Because you're going to go say, what? And he's talking. He's talking without splitting moons. This particular Inferno, I thought it was the new human Inferno. Not at all. It's actually like a place. And I think it seems that um, this has been a title before. Because it's a plane. And Ileana sort of stuck there. And the X-Men are basically cops. But one day out of the year, uh, Scott Summers allows Piotr Colossus to go and try to save Ileana and she's liking it there because she's the demon self so that's Inferno a lot of people like it um, and I'm not going to say anything bad about it because I try not to do reviews but I will say that this is what DC should do it's like no more Hickman Hyperion he's, he's a baddie again but this is I mean it's so DC I mean there's even a part that there's like trophy cases you see the Green Lantern you see the lasso um, what else do you see you see Hawkman's helmet um, Aquaman's trident Green Arrow's bone arrow you see those in trophy cases it's just you know throwback homage to DC I'm really liking this there's also Iron Man Thor Iron Thor so if you want to see a Asgardian Iron Man that's the one lastly this is what it's going to become. New Avengers with Ms. Marvel, Miles Ultimate Spider-Man, The Vision, Female Thor, Black Captain America, and what did I just see? It was Nova. Um, I'm not too sure what that hand is. And then the second one here is the Uncanny Humans, and I hope it's not a spoiler, but I want to entice you. Johnny Storm and Medusa, which is weird because in in, in Human Error, she's basically saying, no, Spider-Man, I can't do that. Well, in that... I know she's pissed at Black Bolt, but Johnny Storm, Medusa. Anyway, thank you for kick click God, man. Need to do more of these. Sorry, I'll get better. Thank you for clicking play.